everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. We're here today with episode five of the Traveler's Notebook, the flea market style Traveler's Notebook make along. So we're doing the third spread today. So um, this is pages two, three, four. This will be pages five, six, and I think 56, 57, but it's not important. It's the third paper in your journal. So what is this? What we're starting with today is going to be a long book page from a children's book or from any book that you like. It doesn't have to be children's book themed. That's just what I'm using. And um, for the majority of the journals that I'm making right now, I'm using pages from A Trip to Wonderland. They're super long. You don't need a super long. What we want the, the length to represent, so the journal is about nine inches long, right? So we want a page that's probably about 12 inches long. So you could use scrapbook paper for this as well. Um, and then just decorate the back in some way, glue paper to it, what have you. You just want something that's long enough to flip up the bottom to create a pocket, okay? So let me show you the completed one. Um, the completed one first and then I will go through how to make what we're making. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to leave the first page alone. We're just going to appreciate that piece of paper. Um, if you if you do something to every single page in the journal you might end up with a really really bulky journal so sometimes it's nice to just appreciate that nice page. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your paper. So we open it up here We've got two pockets that we created from the bottom flap of this existing piece of paper. We have a collage on each of the pockets because of course the images there are going to be upside down. They may not be applicable to what we're doing. In the pocket, this is sort of an altered envelope um, that has an acetate window. You can also use tracing paper, parchment paper, um, what have you. It doesn't have to be see-through, um, but I recommend trying to find some plastic packaging from around your home um, and use it up with this project because that will, um, that will definitely be good for the environment. So then inside the envelope what we're also going to do is create a little freeform journal card of sorts and there's a background in there too so i will go through that's probably going to be the bigger project today um, that we're going to do this this piece of ephemera so that pops into this pocket then this one i'm calling an audience card. So this is a journal card on both sides um, and I'm calling them audience cards because the whole concept here is to have a little audience of people up here. So these have been cut out of a book about old film stars. Um, you can find these kind of black and white images or color images, whatever, just people um, from magazines, from art books, um, all sorts of different things. And then um, we're going to back it so that it is writing space on both sides. And then the only other thing we're doing is on the back, we're going to do a book page ruffle that we're going to stitch on. Stitch through rather, we're not going to stitch it on. So let's get started on this project. Um, don't be overwhelmed. I know it seems like a little bit, but we're going to go slowly enough that you'll you'll see this and you'll have this video. You'll be able to um, follow along. So again, we are working in this journal. So I selected this book page. Um, I already folded it up, but that's not important. So this is a book page from a children's book and I just love these pink cats. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, the back has a dragon on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a pocket with it. <clears throat> so the first thing you need to make sure is, is this going to fit inside my journal at the spot where I, you know, create my pocket, right? So yes for me it's going to so i fold that there so now this is going to be my pocket so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to unfold it again and then fold it this way then um, in the spot where you created the pocket which is right there you're going to see that fold from the bottom here just an ever so slight angle upward to the tip the tip reaching right where you folded you're going to start wider and go more narrow so you should have a little triangle of paper so then open it up and what we've done is we've just created a gusset for the two pockets so that there's like no, they're not going to get caught in the seam when we do the binding 
So then what I'll do is I'm just going to glue this down with art glitter glue. So you just have to glue the two sides of the pocket and try to keep your glue neatly to the edge because um, if you go too wide, you'll lose space that you need for your pocket. Not a unique instruction to this journal. That's a general <laughs> when making a pocket rule. Okay. And I apologize if I sound a little sniffly today. I don't know. <clears throat> I just have caught this little thing that my kids have, but I am, um, I, I took a test yesterday. It's not, it's not the big one, the bad one or anything. It's just some little sniffly thing. Okay. So now we have our two pockets. So what I recommend now is doing a little collage if what's left here doesn't make sense on the pocket. So, um, what you see I did over here on both sides, I actually used images from the same piece of paper that I cut the top off of. And then I just added some little labels and little things to it to make it a little bit more interesting. So this side, actually, I'm going to leave alone because it has this doll and these dice and like it looks like things are spilling out of drawers here. So that I'm totally fine with. But this could be, you know, writing space. But there's kind of a strange dragon foot coming up. So I think I might stick something there. Um, what to put there? And remember, this journal is eclectic. It's not a theme. So I'm just looking in my little bits and bobs. I'll pull them up here so that you can see them. You can do this from scraps, obviously. Um, that might be good. I have one of those little technical drawings, maybe. Yeah, we'll do that. <clears throat> so then we'll just paste those down. Side up. Doesn't really matter, but okay. All right, so that is finished. Whoops, I just noticed her there. <laughs> <laughs> That's finished for now. So now we're going to move on to making the most complex part of this, which is the envelope. So let me grab my other one to look at as a reference point, even though I think I know what I need to do. So what you want is an envelope that is small enough that it's going to fit in your pocket. So I have a whole bunch of these little pink envelopes. Um, so it started out like this. It's like a little vintage stationary envelope. So um, that being said, you can also make your own envelope. I'm sure there's many videos out there to help you along with that. So I won't demonstrate that today. Um, don't worry if what I'm doing is trying to undo the seam. Don't worry if you tear it, okay? If it's sticky, see I just gouged the paper. It's all going to get covered up. I'm only um, doing this so that I can open up the envelope to work with it and um, on the most part I'm just trying to, the glue's not, I'm just trying to open it. The glue's not really like unstuck, it's still quite sticky. So see it's kind of peeling up the back there. No worries though, again not a concern. Okay, so now we have the envelope open. Okay, then I'll just throw a bit of glue right here and just paste that down so it's not in my way. Okay, so then what we're looking to do is work on the front first, okay? So just poke a hole, then just cut a free form, fun shape, don't get too close to the edge. <clears throat> You could also tear this if you prefer a torn edge, that's also fine. Okay, so now we have this freeform shape, right? Now, um, 
here it is. So I have all my supplies off to the side. This is just a little piece of plastic packaging. I'm just gonna rub it on my book page for a minute to get any dust or blemishes off. Um, so the whole idea here is we want to create a see-through window. So make sure when you lay down your piece or when you measure your piece to cut it from packaging or whatever, that you leave enough space that you're going to be able to attach it on. Now there's lots of different ways to attach it. You could use a glue. I'm actually recommending to not use a glue. I would use either a double-sided tape like I'm using or even a piece of packing tape is totally fine. Um, any kind of a tape that you can use that will um, just keep it stuck down. Um, and what I'm gonna do with the double-sided tape, I'm going to go half on the edge and half off. I'm going to do it on both sides. And the reason that I'm recommending against glue is kind of twofold. Number one, more than likely, especially if you chose to use Fabri-Tac, a glue that would actually stick the plastic, um, <clears throat> is probably going to bleed onto the surface of your, of your acetate that, that goes into the window. And then you're just going to have a smudgy mess to deal with and it won't be fun. So I've got my tape on either side. Now, the other point here is that this, this double-sided tape is actually very sticky. I do think it's a pretty permanent solution. If I weren't stitching, I might use a little more. I might be a little more um, um, particular about it, but I'm going to be stitching around it. So remember, that's what's going to hold it on, not the tape. Oh, I really dislike peeling this tape. Okay, there's one side. Then this side. This is the part of the video that you can catch up because I'm going to be struggling with tape for a moment here. <laughs> and the struggle is real. There we go. Okay. So there's our two pieces of tape. Um, okay. Good, good, good. <clears throat> and the truth of the matter is you don't even need to use double-sided tape because there's nothing that I need to stick right away right here. Um, the reason that I am is because it's the thinnest tape that I have. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so that's what the front looks like right now. What I'm going to do is just pause for a moment and with this side up on the sewing machine, I'm going to do a couple or maybe even three, two or three rows of single stitch. And what I recommend um, for stitching, you'll see that I did it here. Pull your stitch length to the max. I put mine at five um, so that the stitches are a bit farther apart. It's not going to gouge so closely um, because number one, you're stitching thin paper and number two, it's got to go through the acetate. So stitch around in the same freeform shape. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, we are all stitched around. So I'll just trim these threads away. So this is what the back looks like and the front. Okay, so now what we want to do um, is basically we need to create a piece of paper that's, you know, a decent weight, not too heavy, but not too thin, like a, a quality kind of lightweight cardstock or something like that, or book page weight. Um, because what we want to do now is we want to create the backing that's going to be behind the journal card okay so you see the green here it is going to be visible and it needs to be exactly the shape of the the envelope okay so i need to get something i just used scraps for this so that's what i'm going to do again you can use book page book page looks nice as a background digging through scraps over here. I've got this. That could be kind of cool. And it does go with the theme of the journal, like the color themes. Yeah, so we'll use that. So now what we need to do basically is um, 
get a piece of paper to back that on to. I'm going to use just some book page. Um, let's tear that off. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is just line the piece of paper up with the background of the envelope. I'm going to fold it here. So that's how long it needs to be. And I'm going to go ever so slightly less so it doesn't get trapped in the, in the gap of the envelope when it closes. So now we have the width, right? So then we'll fold it up here when we get the height. You're just lining up the top of the paper with the top like this rectangle, the main section of the envelope, okay? So then again, the same thing. Just tear it again on the fold. All right, so now we have this. So then we're going to cover this backing here in glue. And then you're going to lay the part of the image that you want visible right in the center. Okay, so we've glued that to it. And I went a little short there, you see that? That's a problem, but it's not because this is white, it's not gonna matter. Um, so just make sure that you get onto your image all the way. <laughs> Don't be too much of a rebel like me. Um, then, where did my scissors go? Oh, here they are. Okay. Then we're going to just trim around. And this is another opportunity you have to trim it more if it needs to be. Okay, so now we have that perfect rectangle shape. And then just try it out, pop it in and try it out. And just make sure it's the direction that you like. You might want to flip it upside down if you think it would look better this way. Or if you've used like an image that has a right and wrong side. Yeah, I think I like it that way best. Okay. Now you're going to take it and see the side that you backed it with? Cover the bad side, the backed side in glue. Then lay the good side down on top of the acetate. And let me move the glue book out of the way here. Just line it up. Then you're going to stick your flap inside, your bottom flap. Then you're going to stick this flap and then this flap. And then don't worry if this looks nicer, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Okay. So we've retained the pocket, it's still here. Okay. But now I wanna cover the back of this with journaling space. So I'm going to do that using some papers that my daughter was playing with here. Maybe with these little purple dots or something. Does that look good? Maybe not. Maybe not. Hmm. I'd try to use like a nice paper on the back if you can. Something interesting if you have it. So, you know, check your scrap bin. Check whatever. If you have some paper like handmade paper like this. I really like to use this kind of paper as um, a writing space. It's what I used on the other piece as well, as you can see here. So then what we're going to do, so this is still sticky here, okay? We're going to just add glue now again to this whole back surface on top of the flaps. This is why none of that tearing mattered because um, it wasn't going to ever be important. Now, you do need one straight edge to line up up here. Okay. Let's so just seal this down. Then you snip around it. 
And if you wanted to, you could stitch around the edges of the envelope. I'm not going to. I don't really think it needs it. And I realize I made one small mistake, which maybe you've noticed. The flap that I retained was actually the, the bottom torn flap. I should have kept the top flap like this with the glue there, but it doesn't matter. It's the same. It's just the only thing is that, you know, it's gotten a little tattered here. So let me fix that in a fun way. Let's just cover it with glue. Take a page from my super old book here. Lay that on there. And then go around. This is the whole thing with junk journaling. You don't need to be like too worried if you make a mistake because there's really fun ways to fix things. And honestly, it just means you're adding even more interest to the whole thing you're working on, right? Like I actually like this one better than the other one now because it has this fun detail. It's not just a plain white piece of paper on the back. All right, so now just bend your envelope again. Okay, good. All right, so now we will, what do we want to do? Maybe we'll do the decorating first. So I kept the decoration kind of simple here. I like to decorate around the frame a bit. Things can overlap the frame if you want them to. This is where you're going to need a few like little focal points. You could use word snippets, um, stickers. I'm going into my ephemera, my little ephemera book over here. So the last one I used a sticker for a mushroom. So this time maybe I'll use these flowers. Let's put that there on the edge. And you're just kind of framing this in almost like those um, Victorian style cabinet card frames. Okay. And you can overlap your acetate a little bit. There we go. So there's that. And then I'll find maybe something else that I find interesting. What else do I have in here? This is kind of neat. Yeah, I'll go with that. I like how it's going to overlap the, um, the acetate a little bit. So I'll put this away because I'm not going to need it anymore. So then I'm going to put some right on the top and on the sides where I know it needs to stick to the paper. Okay, right like that, I think. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Then I might use a little word snippet just because now I mentioned it, I'm going to want to do it. Um, okay, let's use that one. So this is contrary to popular fantasies. And again, I like the uh, eclectic and random feel to that statement. So there we go. So as you can probably tell, everything's looking kind of new and white and not that um, weathered, which I'm not going to want. So I'm going to grab my walnut stain ink and I'm just going to ink around it here. Let's ink the edges. And then on the front, I'm going to ink around on these things I'm adding to it. Just to kind of grunge it up a little bit. And overall, it's quite a bright pink envelope, so I'm just going to add a bit more grunginess. Okay, so there we go. We've created the envelope. Now we need to create this. Um, oh, and you might want to ink the back as well a little bit if you... Okay. 
So now we need to create this freeform card to put inside of it. So I'm going to get my, um, my scraps. I'm going to look at what I want to put in here and I'll be right back with something. Okay, so I found this image from um, a vintage children's book, and I think it's what I want to use inside of here. I like I like this image. So I'm just going to put my envelope down on top of the part of the image that I definitely want to use. Um, and then I will line my ruler up here and then just move it. I know rightly what I need to pull off. And then down here, okay. and then again with the sides. And you just want to make this ever so slightly smaller than your envelope. And now you get to decide if you want to keep this in a square shape or if you want a freeform shape, right? There's sort of two ways to go about this. I could definitely um, just go with, you know, using this as my background image. But when I look at it, I'm losing the spot where I want his head to be um, or her head to be. So I'm going to just fold it down a little, hold it here and see, I'll put it back in there maybe. I want to see her face right there. So that's basically the shape that I need. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose freeform. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. But we can't just stick this in there as is because it's not going to sit properly and it's going to have some blank spaces. So I need to create some kind of a background for it. So I've got this piece of old scrap kind of paper. The colors work um, pretty well with it. So I'm going to use that as um, kind of a, a backing paper as well as a frame. Now, if your image, like my first one, is just large enough to fit in your pocket, you don't need to do this. But I need to do this just because I need a little bit more surface area to go into my pocket. Okay. So I think it'll be good if I just cut about this much off. And I know the bottom here needs to line up. So I know I need to cut this off the bottom when I compare it against the size of the envelope. And then I'm just going to fix up the edges to a shape that I like that kind of matches the freeform feeling of this. Then I will plunk it inside and take a look at what we have. So it's still a little too high. Okay, there we go. Now I can see her face. So that's what I'm going for right there. So I'm just going to now clean things up, get rid of any excess bits of paper. And there we are, I think that's finished. Okay, so there they are together. Let me put this one back in here. I chose to back this with the same paper. You don't have to, but that's what I chose for this one. So, um, oops, this is upside down. Yeah, there's the bird. That's what we want this way. OK, 
Okay. So now when you pull it out, you see the blue, and when you put it in, you see this little person here. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, and I think what I'm going to do, again, to just strengthen up that one flap, because that's not the flap that I intended to, um, to keep. I'm just going to add a little washi. And this is a good quality washi. It's not like cheap washi. Um, this is actually quite sticky and it's not going to fall off. Just where um, the seam is here, I've added the washi on that one side just because there's more pressure being added by this piece of cardstock. I wouldn't want that to tear. So now we're all good. Okay, so now, this is what goes inside the pocket on this side. Um, okay, so I was actually kind of hoping that this problem would occur. So see, it's a little tight. It would fit, but I don't want to have to ram it in there. So when this happens, just take a flat ruler and just gently, slowly and gently guide some of the glue up a little. Um, to see sometimes you get glue seepage from art glitter glue and if you just do this slowly enough and you should actually maybe do it I do this all the time so I'm being brave and doing it with a metal ruler but I actually recommend a plastic ruler like this is the one you should use this plastic because it's a little gentle and you can actually see it I don't know if you can see the line here I can see where it is and there we go now we've opened our pocket a little more I might as well do this one while I'm here um, just to sort of check the seam where where it is because I get a little aggressive with glue sometimes. <laughs> All right now so this will go in this pocket and you can decide whichever way you like it. So um, actually I like how that overlaps there that's cute. <laughs> okay then now we need to make our audience card. So let me get the, where's the page from the other journal? Um, I've set it somewhere. Hmm. There it is, I put it in, in this journal, okay. So this is the audience card. What you're going to need are some people and some kind of, I would recommend coffee dyed paper or some kind of, if you have this kind of handmade paper, um, I also would recommend that because it does look quite nice. So let me set this part of the journal aside and we'll move the current page we're working on aside. Then I need some people. So I have this cutout of people um, that, I, that I'm using and um, what I wanna do now, I think I'll use these three and just make sure the width of the people is going to fit in your pocket. So, this one, as you'll notice, it doesn't have a clean edge. She's torn out here. So is he. I'm not going to be too concerned about that, actually. I'm just going to cut around them. And I typically leave a little bit of white space just because fussy cutting is, you know, time consuming. And so we'll just cut around. shoulder here. Let's get the big piece of paper out of the way. Then you can just cut the bottom. We won't need that. So for this one I think I will use maybe um, coffee dyed paper because you've already seen what this paper looks like. So let me do something that's a little more kind of um, domestic to, to everyone that everybody would have. And let me put away this card back into this journal so it's out of my way. Okay. So coffee dyed paper. <clears throat> Here is a piece of coffee dyed paper. Now, what I will do is just take the whole piece of paper. Okay, don't cut anything yet. Just take the whole piece of paper. Now you've got your people here. 
So just glue your people down on the upper right hand corner of your paper. Just kind of glue stick them on here. Leave a bit of an edge on both the top and the outer side. Okay. Then, you know, I know that the width of them will fit in my pocket. I've already checked on that. So then what you're going to do is on the one side, leave a little bit of space actually, just go ahead, tear the long edge, and then you just have, this is your left over. So then take that bottom edge and bring it up to the level that you want showing. Like maybe you don't want to see his clothes at all. I want to see just a little bit of his clothes there. And fold it. Now this is the stage where I'm going to do some stitching. Well in a second. But I wanted to show you something. So see here I stitched all the way around. Now you have an option with this kind of card. You could choose to just stitch around here and then you could also go up and around them if you wanted. You could leave this as a pocket okay but I'm going to stitch down. I, I don't want it to be a pocket. I want this to be a journal card. So um, the first thing I want to do is just cut against the hard edge. And then I'm just going to cut around the people with the same type of lines that I've been using here. I'm leaving a little bit of the coffee dyed paper visible. And then I'm going to come down again and I'm going to trim against the pocket again. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to stitch a square here. Okay, so this is all stitched around. Um, so I've just done the square and so you see on the back the square and so this is all writing space on the back and on the front. Um, and I think if you were to leave this as a pocket you could actually put another little paper doll in there that would be funny like even if it was short like imagine her like she could pop up out of there it'd be very funny. I like to add little elements of humor to my journals when it's like possible it's kind of fun. So there we go that is done. So then pop that in the pocket. So now we just have one thing left to do and that is the paper ruffle made from book page. Okay so let's put our audience card in here and then I'll show you how to make a paper ruffle. It's very very easy and simple. So you're just going to grab a book page then um, from the bottom up just grab the bottom, like leave about an inch and fold and then leave about, you know, half an inch and fold down. You can decide what, you know, you like best. Then you're going to leave a little bit longer, fold up, fold down. And you're just creating like an accordion of paper and you can decide on the, how, how much you want to do. So once you've done that, you've got this, um, you know, accordion of paper you see that so fold it up it looks like that so now I'm just going to go run a couple lines of stitching down it and we're going to create two ruffles with it so I'll be right back okay so I've done one line of zigzag and one line of um, <laughs> crooked straight stitches so now you're just going to cut on either side or even what's nicer maybe is to tear because you get a more freeform look to things. So just tear on either side, giving a little bit of space to the stitching. Then you can choose to trim the stitching um, off like the threads or you can leave them on. I'm going to trim a little bit. I typically leave a lot of threads long in my books just because I think it adds to the overall feel. Okay, so we only need one of these. I'm just going to set this one in my scraps. Whenever you can make, make more than one, do so. So I'm going to put this one right here and I'm just going to use Art Glitter Glue and I'm going to run it right up the back of the stitching. Right there. Then 
I'm just going to choose how where I like it right there is good and I usually I will line the area that I glued up see about sort of a not quite a, a quarter inch maybe inward so that it's not right on the edge and that will allow a bit of the paper to stick out now if you feel like this is too much you can come in and just kind of you know clean it up to what makes you comfortable how much paper you want sticking out um okay so that is our completed third spread of um paper today so first page is left alone we have fold up pockets this is created from a long book page um and then our altered envelope with the acetate window and the freeform journal card our audience card our two little collages well I did one in this journal because I like this page and then our paper ruffle so that is the plan for today thank you so much for hanging out with me let's put this in the journal and see how it looks so this one is for this journal so um We'll just put these pages back in neatly. I've really been using these books a lot, like <laughs> looking at my plans and stuff, so they're a little bit all over the place. So let's see how it looks. It goes right in here. That's yeah, that's the last page we did, and I think that that's a nice little matchup. And there we go. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you so much. Um, you can take a look if you missed any of the videos in this series and you'd like to play along. Um, you definitely have time to. I'm not going to release these videos like every single day, but I'd say every, sometimes there will be consecutive days, but sometimes there might be a day in between. It all depends what other videos I'm launching that day or what, what I can manage or if I need to skip a day of making. Um, so that being said, you can find a playlist called the flea market style tn make along so you can find that um, on my channel it's my last few videos and um, i look forward to hanging out with you again so thank you so much don't forget to subscribe if you have fun here if you like to do these kind of projects i have so many more in the plans um, and you can find all my social media information down below in the description box bye for now have a great day